This is part of a series of videos around solution development that frequently occurs in the improve phase of a demaic based process improvement project. And we'll be looking at brainstorming and idea floats as a technique. The specific learning objectives for this video include reviewing common brainstorming rules and adding a few that I think are really important for process improvement team development. We'll also take a look at tips for more productive brainstorming sessions. And then we'll end with a, a way to deal with some of the truly outlandish ideas that happen during an effective brainstorming session and how to make those ideas feasible. I call it an idea float. We'll look at using an idea float exercise at the end of a brainstorming session. So I've cleaned up my screen a little bit. I'm pulling information from the Business Process Improvement Workbook. And here's where we're at right now. We've finished up the analyze phase of a DMAIC-based process improvement project. And we've got a series of root causes that have been identified. For each of the root causes, I will always have my team spend a little bit of time doing some brainstorming on each of the root causes to develop solutions. I'll let the teams know that we're going to run each one of the root causes as a separate mini brainstorming session, and our goal is to create as big of a list as possible, knowing that it'll be in the back half of the improved phase that we narrow that list down. I think it's really important to let teams know that they're going to be working on each of the root causes so that you can have more focused brainstorming sessions so that you can stagger those brainstorming sessions. Uh, you don't have to treat it as one big half day retreat on brainstorming, but a series of smaller ones. Uh, and uh, I think it's really important for them to realize that the Ideas that they come up with now are not necessarily the ideas that are going to be in the implementation plan. We're going to select from this list of many the few that are most important. So they can come up with just as crazy of an idea as possible. By doing that, we're really hitting on some of the key rules that all of us have been familiar with. Brainstorming is done across all sorts of business domains. The golden rule of uh, any idea is a good idea or the idea of no judgment, it's an important one to remind teams about. We can come up with these outlandish ideas now because in the back half of the improved phase, we'll be vetting those ideas. There are some supporting rules that I think most of you are familiar with, and I've got support uh, articles that uh, walk you through a specific brainstorming session and outline those rules that I think most of us are familiar with. One of the things that I like to do though that isn't always included in the list of rules is I like to time box these events. For each one of these uh, bursted brainstorming sessions for a particular root cause, I like the time box to be no greater than 15 minutes. And frequently, if I've got a high performing team that's really knowledgeable about where the root causes came from, I might cut that in half and say, let's try to knock out as many possible solutions for this root cause in seven or eight minutes. There are a couple of other things that I like to do with my brainstorming sessions. I'm a big fan of creating uh, hurdles and competition. By hurdle rates, what I mean is within the time box session, I'll tell team members, look, we've got 15 minutes, we've got seven or eight minutes. Let's try to come up with uh, everybody, we need to come up with at least 10 possible solutions in that time period. Uh, by creating a hurdle rate, you'd be surprised how high performing team members like to hit or exceed that hurdle rate. And if I've got a larger group, uh, group sizes eight, 10, or higher, uh, I like to break them into subgroups and create little competitions where we'll have them break into two groups of four or five. They'll have their little separate work areas. I'll time box it with a hurdle rate and I'll say the team that comes up with the most ideas in this time box period wins some novelty. It should be some sort of trinket or, or nothing, just bragging rights. Uh, it don't make the rewards uh, so valuable that people end up gaming the system. The goal is to create as many possible solutions as you can. 
Sometimes, though, I run into problems with brainstorming sessions, and the reason isn't because teams don't want to come up with uh, solutions to these root causes. It's because they're fatigued. They've been going through a long journey through define, measure, and analyze, and we've talked about that fatigue factor in earlier videos. And when I find that teams are fatigued, I like to introduce I call them igniters and constrainers. Uh, I don't do this every time, but if I found that the brainstorming session was just a dud, nobody really came up with very much, uh, I might go back and inside the business process improvement workbook, I've got over 50 different igniters and constrainer statements that can be used to help teams think outside of the box. You know, for example, one of the igniters is, what if you were the president of the organization uh, and you could be president for a day, what would you be able to do to help come up with solutions for this root cause? Or you had magic pixie dust and an unlimited budget, what would be some of the solutions? Those are examples of igniters. I find that constrainers though, are sometimes even more effective, where you box people in by saying, you can only come up with solutions that are under a certain budget, or they can only be implemented in a very small time period, or the, all of the solutions need to be green in nature, you know, uh, reduce your carbon footprint. Those are all examples of constrainers. It's surprising how when you box team members in with these constrainers that somehow they're able to more easily see outside of the box the possibilities. I know that's like using a cliche twice there, but I think you get the idea. Constrainers can really help. Sometimes the dilemma with a really effective brainstorming session is that you get an enormous list and some of those ideas are truly outlandish, wild ideas that there's no possible way that they'll actually be able to be implemented in future state. If that's the situation, I like to use another tool after the brainstorming session to help uh, weed out the outlandish, but in many ways help uh, refine the outlandish. It's a, it's an idea generator as well as an idea filtering technique. I call it an idea float. Let's take a look at it. So what do you do when you've actually had a really effective brainstorming session and you've got too many ideas or I shouldn't say too many ideas. You have lots of ideas and a few of them are truly outlandish. Like for example, let's say that one of the root causes that you were coming up with solutions for was the fact that manual transfer of a paper form was being couriered uh, by part-time students doing internal mail transfers or internal mail couriering uh, to move that paper form from one building to another building. Uh, that actually happened, or that was actually one root cause that we had for a higher ed campus uh, financial transaction uh, process that was poorly performing. And when we were coming up with possible solutions to address this manual paper currying activity, we had one team member say, let's install bank teller tubes to connect all of the buildings on campus together. The first rule of brainstorming says, you know, no idea is a bad idea. So bank teller tubes was written down on the list. We, uh, many of the team members squirmed when I wrote it down. They're like, there's no way that we'll be able to do bank teller tubes. But I said, we got to put it down. We came up with a whole suite of other solutions that I have displayed here. And so let's say that there are 31 solutions, including bank teller tubes. If I want to weed out the outlandish, but also try to distill the essence of the outlandish into a new solution set. I do a two-part exercise called an idea float. In the first part of the exercise, I give team members either a red pen or red voting dots, and I'll say, if there's any solution that you feel is too costly, too time-consuming, outside of scope, uh, it's illegal, immoral, I don't care whatever your reason is for why you don't like the solution. If you want to put a red check next to that solution, we'll consider removing it from the list. And, you know, some solutions will get a couple of check marks. Some solutions will be awesome and nobody wants to touch them at all. And bank teller tubes, well, you know, everybody wants to get rid of bank teller tubes. 
After we do the red checking of possible outlandish ideas, the second part of the exercise is to come up with the final list. We'll move over the ones that had no checks. That means everybody liked it. But for each of the ideas that were checked, and it didn't matter if they got one check or if it was a unanimous checkoff, we'll assign an extra 60 second to this solution before we remove it from the list. And in the 60 seconds, I will do a 60 second bursted session with the team in which I say, this solution is about to be removed. But if in the next 60 seconds, we can float this idea down, it's too high in the clouds now, it's too outlandish, but if we could float it down, take the essence of this idea and turn it into something that is reasonable, that is that, that could be considered for the final solution implementation plan. We've got 60 seconds to do so, and if we can't, we're taking it off the list. And occasionally what you'll find is that in 60 seconds, nobody comes up with anything, or, or their new ideas are even more outlandish than the previous one, so it comes off the list. We've given it an extra 60 seconds, nothing could be done, too outlandish. Uh, more frequently than not, though, what ends up happening is you take this outlandish idea and the first 10 seconds of this exercise, nobody says anything. And then another 10 seconds goes by and in that silence, people start coming up with what I call distilled or floated down ideas. Bank teller tubes couldn't be done, but somebody yells out, um, you know, what about courier pigeons? Equally outlandish. Uh, but then another person says, well, why don't we take the paper form and scan it to PDF and then Wi-Fi it to the next building? And now all of a sudden, this outlandish idea has created a much more plausible future state solution. Brainstorming will be used uh, for all of our root causes. Uh, I make sure that the teams are familiar with the common rules, but I will also inject some of the special techniques uh, constrainers and igniters when needed. And when I have a large list of ideas after brainstorming and maybe after using all of the other uh, solution development tools that we talk about in other videos, I might want to consider doing an idea float, which both generates new ideas as well as removes completely outlandish ideas. We'll then take a look at follow up tools in future videos on scoring techniques to further refine our final list to come up with the best of the best solutions.